Welcome, everyone. I hope your week has been good to you so far. I'm Cheryl Rogers, the Director of Marketing here at Golden Helix. And today, Hawa Yusuf, one of our field application scientists, will give you a look at VS Warehouse from the user's perspective. She'll discuss how data warehousing technology can assist in not only organizing your genomic data, but also enabling further analysis and ongoing research. Hawa, I will pass the mic to you. Thank you, Cheryl, for the introduction, and good morning, everybody. Thank you for the time to join us today. Well stated, my name is Hawa, and I'm a field application scientist here at Golden Helix. If you have any questions today during today's presentation, please feel free to enter them at any time in the questions pane in your GoToWebinar window. We'll try to answer as many of them as possible. Now, if there are any questions we don't get to, we will follow up with the answers as soon as possible. Here's our agenda for today. For those of you who may not be familiar with Golden Helix, I will take a minute to talk about us and what we do. And for those of you who are familiar, I promise I'll keep it brief. I will then talk a little bit about genetic data warehousing, what it is, and why we need it. The rest of today's session will then be focused on VS Warehouse, which is our genetic data warehousing solution, and we will explore some concepts and some use cases for that. As promised, we will wrap up with the uh, we will wrap up the hour with a Q&A session. With that, here's a little bit about us. Golden Helix was founded in 1998, so we're about 18 years old now. Our founders spun off early work at GlaxoSmithKline, and GSK was a key investor in the company. Golden Helix started out creating products for genomics and bioinformatics with Helix Tree, which is now evolved to be our SNP and variation suite. SVS is a research-focused product that allows researchers to perform genome-wide association studies, genom genomic prediction, large end population studies, and many other research-oriented analysis. On the clinical side, we have our second product, which is Varseq. Varseq allows our clinicians to annotate and filter down samples to variants of interest and create clinical reports modeled off the ACMG guidelines. For our high-throughput users, Varseq has the ability to run all the workflows via our high-performance pipeline. Varseq also supports VS Warehouse, our data warehousing solution that we will be exploring today. We are in business with over 350 client organizations, and they fall into five different categories. We work with large hospitals like SickKids, CHOP, and others, and many research organizations like Stanford, UCLA, and Yale. Our customers include labs that fall into the testing lab category, like Prevention Genetics, NCI Centers, and others. We also work with major pharmaceutical companies like Bayer and Teva. And last but not least, we work with government organizations, and here in the United States, that includes organizations such as the NIH, the USDA, and, and the FDA. Within these organizations, we are approaching over 10,000 actual users. Some of our clients use our software to get published, and today I'm very excited to say that we have recently broken the 1,000 citation barrier. We've been cited in publications such as Science, Nature, Nature Genetics, and others. And we are very proud of the fact that when you buy a Golden Helix product, you're getting more than just a piece of software. We have a reputation for quality products, excellent customer service, and domain expertise. We support our customers every step of the way and engage with our customers to help us understand their use cases and ecosystems. We keep active in the community by speaking at, sponsoring or attending events and conferences, we publish ebooks and best practices, and we stay engaged within the community. In fact, most recently we attended ACMG in March, and we will be at ESAG in Barcelona this May. Last but not least, we are transparent about how we implement our methods and algorithms. You can review our methods and citations and externally vet the methods we have embedded in our product. We pride ourselves on speed and innovation and offer highly customizable products. So that's enough about us. Let's talk a little bit about the topic of the day. Why genetic warehouse, data warehousing? Well, a lot of this is motivated by the success of precision medicine and its anticipated future growth. 
In fact, Grandview Market Research estimates the next generation sequencing market in 2014 to be a $2 billion market, and we expect an annual growth of 40% between now and 2020. This phenomenon is driven by the advances in prenatal testing and oncology and the increase in number of treatment options for precision medicine across the board. So for individual labs, this means the decreasing prices of genome sequencing coupled with population growth and the increase in demand for prenatal testing and oncology, this means they're going to have a lot of data. Right now we're seeing that smaller labs are easily conducting a dozen of whole genome analysis per month while larger labs are processing hundreds per month. And according to that same Grandview Market study, each lab will see an average of 40% year-over-year increase in its data volume. So it seems appropriate to not only have the ability to store and archive large amounts of data, but also the ability to query and retrieve subsets of data from our data store. Also, we want to be able to leverage our variant warehouse to aid and enable researchers and clinicians with their further analysis and ongoing research. And this is just what we've done with the VS warehouse. We want the ability to use our warehouse as an immediate annotation source. We want to create a knowledge base of samples that we've processed and come to clinical, clinical diagnosis about, and we want to use it as a data source going forward. So whenever we sequence a sample, we want to be able to answer questions like, have we seen this variant before in our clinical practice? And if so, at what frequency have we seen it? We we'll also want to answer questions like, does this gene contain other rare variants in my cohort? Or has this variant been classified before by either ClinVar or other sources? And we also want to see if this particular variant we're looking at has been used in a report from previous samples. The ability to answer these questions is particularly useful for those studying or researching minority populations or disease categories. As the body of knowledge around precision medicine grows, which by the way is growing at an exponential rate, a variant that was classified as of unknown significance yesterday can quickly change to likely pathogenic or even pathogenic tomorrow. So we need a variant warehouse that can identify those changes and alert clinicians when those changes happen. These alerts are very important and can potentially trigger follow-ups with a clinician or a patient. Often enough, labs conduct research based on samples that has been processed over time. The ability to capture all the sample data in, from a data warehouse enables cohort studies in which data between affected and unaffected samples are compared on a genomic level. And last but not least, a data warehouse would not be a data warehouse without access to the database and an API that serves as an integration point between the lab and other hospital systems. This allows the lab to keep track of vital metrics such as how many tests were conducted in the past day, week, month, or year, or how many samples were added to the warehouse in the past day, week, month, or year. The VS Warehouse API also supports queries that can be made via the user interface. I will spend the rest of this webinar showing you how VS Warehouse addresses some of these use cases and answers the questions we have posed. So VS Warehouse is built off of existing Varsic product suite and our expertise and track record in providing clinical annotation, filtering, and interpretation workflows for labs that are doing genetic tests. Since we're constrained on time today, I won't be able to go into the details of these workflows, but I do want to orient you with how Varseq works. By the way, we have webcasts that go into the details of these workflows, or if you're interested in a Varseq demo, please let us know, and we'll help set one up for you. So in the life cycle of launching and supporting next genome sequencing tests, we first set up a workflow to define what our test is. This means taking data off a secondary pipeline, that is the variant color that gives us VCF files, which we can then import into Varseq. In Varseq, we then add annotation sources that are helpful in the filtering as well as the interpretation process. This often includes ClinVar, which is the NCBI DIT catalog of clinically relevant variants and the impact that they have on human diseases. This also includes gene, gene annotations, which specify how a mutation affects the transcripts. 
We would usually add a population frequency annotation to know how these mutations occur in a healthy population. So now that we've got our variants and some annotations, based on this information, we can then filter down our list of variants to just those of interest. Then we can generate and render a report based on the variant candidates that came out of our annotation and filtering process. At this point, we want to be able to catalog this information, and over time, the idea is to take advantage of the data that we have. We want to start cataloging this information that we have captured and put them in reports and have them available whenever we want. And this is just where the warehouse comes in. For this webcast, I've gone ahead and prepared the data and performed the analysis. With Exum data, some of these steps can take some time, and I don't want to bore you with progress bars, so instead we'll jump back and forth between Varseq and VS Warehouse to explore what I have done and see how we can use the warehouse to answer some of these questions and the use cases that we've outlined. After running our CU Trio through our Trio workflow in Varseq, we upload it to the warehouse. So we have a trio sample already uploaded to the warehouse. We will then explore querying and filtering samples in VS Warehouse and view the results. In Varseq, we have our second trio, our YRI trio, that we also want to run through the workflow. This time around, we will use the data from our warehouse to make more informed decisions about our variants of interest. We will annotate against our VS Warehouse trio and generate a clinical report in Varseq. We will then sync our report up to the warehouse and view the report in VS Warehouse. In VS Warehouse, we'll take a look at the script management interface that allows us to create clinical alerts that shows us, for example, what has changed in claim months in last month's in this month's claim var in comparison to last month's. We will update our report and project in Varseq and sync the updates to the warehouse. Finally, we will see how to export data from VS Warehouse for cohort analysis and software such as our SNP and Variation Suite. With that, I'll go ahead and switch over to the demo. So here's our variant warehouse dashboard. Here we can see some analytics on the warehouse charted over time. This chart shows the number of variants we've added to our warehouse over time. And this screen shows the number of samples we've added to the warehouse over time. And the third screen here shows the size of our data warehouse over time. Moving on, we can see that we have several projects, like the Match Tumor Normal project and our VS Warehouse Trios project. We have a section for reports, and here you can see that we've created one report for a TRIO project. And we have a section for samples that we've added to our warehouse. Here we can see that we have 23 samples, which comes from the 20 in the Match 2 More Normal project and 3 in the VS Warehouse TRIOS project. We also display an activity log to show all the operations that we've performed in our warehouse. Back in our project session, section, we can see that we have one version available, and this contains our CUU trio data that we uploaded earlier to the warehouse. We can click into it to see our variants. We can go ahead and query our variants, all 2.1 million of them, to come down to a filtered set, set of variants. So here we can apply just about any of the filters that we applied in Varseq. And you can see that I've added some filters here to get us down to 456 variants. At this point, we'll go ahead and switch to Varseq and look at our YRI trio. And here you can see that I've got a table of my variants. We've got our sample information for a proband, a mother, and a father. And you can see that I've gone ahead and added some annotation sources such as the NHLBI, RefSeq, ClinVar, and OMEM. To filter down our samples to our candidate var variants, I've gone ahead and added some filters. This, is, this particular workflow is a true workflow, and we're looking for rare variants.
So I added a filter card for a read depth to select variants that have a read depth of greater than 10, genotype qualities greater than 20, African American minor allele frequencies of less than 1% are missing, that have an effect combined of loss of function of missense, and then Mendelian error classification of de novo. I've also added a gene rank out algorithm and I'm selecting variants whose gene rank is greater than 90%. So at this point, this narrows us just down to five variants of interest. At this point in our workflow, we would select a variants of interest and generate a clinical report. If we pay attention to this variant found in chromosome 18, we can see that it is located in the SMAD4 gene, and that is, it is associated with the Meyer syndrome. We can also see that here we have another variant of interest that is, look, that is associated with the Warsaw breakage syndrome and located in chromosome 12. So we'll go ahead and flag this variance as variance of our primary findings and set the other variants to our incidental findings. We can then create a report using this variance in a report template. And we can go ahead and sync this report up to our warehouse. I'll go ahead and log in here to see your report. And here's the rendered version of a report. You can see that I've got those two variants, individual variant interpretation, and my incidental finding variants. Some information about the test and references as well. At this point in our analysis, we'll also want to ask questions such as, have we seen these particular variants before? And because we've added a project in the VS Warehouse, or CEU Trio, we could go ahead and add that as an annotation source for this particular project. And to do that, I just went into Tools and chose Manage VS Warehouse, and it popped up with this dialog. I'll go ahead and go into the Annotations tab, and choose my VS Warehouse Trios project. If I choose, I could also select any other products that I have in my warehouse, as well as variants that were flagged as genetic variants or incidental variants from my reports. Now this takes quite a bit of time to run, so I've already gone ahead and run it, but naturally you click Add as Annotation. So let's take a look at the results of adding our VS Warehouse Trios as an annotation source. So here we can see that we actually did find a variant that we had flagged as a variant of interest in our VS Warehouse. And we can see here that it has an alternate allele frequency of 33.3%. 30 30 so we can tell that it was found in one of our samples, so it's actually not that rare. So I can edit my variance of primary findings. And I can also add this as a filter card in my project. I'll go ahead and enable this filter card. And we can see that we're now narrowed to four variants. We could go ahead and update our report. And we should see that we're down to just two, two variants in, the, in our incidental findings. Now going back to our VS Warehouse view, we could go ahead and also look at this particular report there. Here's a report section. We could click into it. We could choose a particular report. We can see some information that we got from that can also view this report directly in the warehouse. So 
So if we go back to the home page here, we can take a look at our script management interface for scene changes in ClinVar. So we've created a script here called ClinVar Changes, and that essentially tells us what has changed in ClinVar from month to month. If we take a further look at it, we can set our scheduling preferences. We've set it to run monthly, the first of the month at 1 a.m. And if we go back to our home page here, we can check the results of that particular script. And we can see here that we've got two new variants this month that were not in ClinVar last month. We can also see that about a dozen variants have changed in pathogenicity. If we click into this particular variant, we can see that it was found in our VS Warehouse Trios project. And it gives us the particular information about that sample that it was found in. We can see here that it was a homozygous variant and some other information about that particular variant. We can also search for that variant in a warehouse. And again, it tells us that it was found in a VS Warehouse Trius project. So in our particular use case, None of the variants we had flagged as variants of interest have changed in pathogenicity from month to month in ClinVar. However, if they have, we can easily see how this information would prompt us to make changes in our interpretation if they were found in our reports. Now I'll go ahead and next out of here. So at this point, we've looked at a new sample in the where in Varseq. We've gone ahead and annotated against our existing projects in VS Warehouse. We've made changes to reports and added it to the warehouse. We've taken a look at how we can visualize that report in our warehouse. And say at this point we're ready to perform um, cohort analysis on our data. We can easily go to the VS Warehouse filter down to a variance of interest like we did earlier, and export the variance of interest for a cohort analysis. We can export into CSV, Excel, or just about any file type. For this particular analysis, we would like to export it to VCF so we can use it in our SNP and Variation Suite. I'll just go ahead and click on Export, and we'll get that exported data ready for analysis in SVS. If we switch back over to our VARSEQ, we could also add our samples to our existing warehouse project. That way we can start collecting data on our project as time goes on. So from the Tools menu, we can choose Manage VS Warehouse, select projects this time, choose the project we want to upload our samples to, and go ahead and upload those samples. We could either choose to run it immediately or queue it for later. And I'll go ahead and run it immediately. And that process does take quite, takes quite a bit of time, but you go through the exact same process to upload any new samples to your warehouse, and then you would go back to your warehouse and export that data for further research um, in a tool like SVS. So if I switch back over to my presentation, that brings us near the conclusion of the webinar. Um, so today we've looked at how we can use VS Warehouse as an annotation source. We were able to answer questions like, have I ever seen this variant before? We were able to identify a variant in our project that we have seen before and answer at what frequency we've seen it. We saw how we can use the script management interface for clinical alerts, such as notifying us of changes in ClinVar from month to month. And we saw how to export data from VS Warehouse to do further research and cohort analysis. We talked about the ability to use the VS Warehouse API to query the warehouse and its database to answer inventory and accounting questions like how many samples did we add to the warehouse in the past month, or how many reports did we generate in the past year.
With that, we have completed the bulk of this webinar. If you have any questions we don't get to today during the Q&A session or would like to request an evaluation, you can reach us at info at goldenhelix.com or visit our site at goldenhelix.com. Thank you for tuning in. And Cheryl, I'll pass that back to you. Um, as Hawa mentioned, we're going to answer some questions. So feel free to answer or put those questions in the question pane on your interface. Um, I have a couple of quick announcements. Of course, the webcast recording and slides will be up on our website. I hope to have those up tomorrow, but if not, Friday, and I will email them to you, so look for those in your inbox. Um, our next webcast is coming up on Wednesday, April 20th, and that will be presented by Dr. Fulifak Amonking of the University of British Columbia. Dr. Amonking was our first place winner in this year's abstract challenge, and he will present his abstract pharmacogenetic prediction of anthracycline-induced cardiotoxicity. Um, as Hawa touched on, we are super excited to go to ESHG this year in Barcelona. We haven't been in quite some time, so we look forward to meeting um, many of our European customers. If you're attending, please come by and say hi. Gabe Rudy will be proudly representing the Golden Helix team in booth 378. We'll have some demos scheduled, and of course, Gabe will be handing out those famous Golden Helix t-shirts. I will have a demo schedule um, up and posted on a blog as we get closer to the event. So stay tuned for that. And with that, we will go ahead and jump into some questions. Let me take a look here. Can you talk about the scalability of the warehouse? Absolutely. So the warehouse has been tested with 2,500 genomes and about 90 million variants across the board. And we see a very good runtime behavior for that. Um, we are currently working on supporting even larger data sets down the road. And right now, our short term goal is after this initial launch, we're going to significantly improve the import and the export runtime. Thank you, Hawa. Do you have any referenceable clients at this time? Yes, so we have developed the entire clinical testing stack at University of Iowa. They're currently specializing in clinical testing of cancer, but are also conducting research in the space. Um, the VS Warehouse will support them in both areas. We also have other case studies under development resulting from the early access program we did back in March, and they're seeing pretty good results from that as well. Thank you. Can you touch on how the warehouse is licensed? Yes, so unlike a lot of our competitors, we do not have, we do not charge per sample. Um, we have a subscription-based model that allows you to run as many samples as you would like. Um, typically, we license the VS Warehouse as part of our clinical stack, which includes VARSEQ reports and pipeline. We found that this makes the most sense for our clients as the whole solution is very integrated as you have seen here in, the, in today's presentation. So the overall license model is essentially an annual subscription. And if you're interested to learn more about it, you can send us an email at info at goldenhelix.com and we'll make sure an area director who's responsible for your account um, will get in touch with you. Thank you. You demonstrated uploading of selected filtered variants, but is it possible to store all variants from a file to allow population information for all variants seen in a sample? Absolutely. So when during the upload process, you're actually uploading all the variants. So when I uploaded that YRI trio, we had actually uploaded all 2.8 million variants to our data warehouse. So we're not just uploading the selected um, or the filtered variants that we saw. Thank you, Hawa. Um, I see a couple more questions, and I think we'll address those individually. Um, actually, here's one that just popped in that we can answer. How frequently do you update reference sources, like ClinVar, gene annotations, et cetera? So ClinVar, we update on a monthly basis. Um, they release on a monthly basis, so we update it on a monthly basis. Um, our curation team takes pride in being up to date on um, as many of those as possible. Um, if there are any that you don't see in our in our database that we provide, you can always reach out to us and we'll be happy to curate that for you as well. Thank you, Hawa. 
I think that we are going to go ahead and call it a day for this webinar. Um, any questions that continue to roll in, I will have someone address those directly with you. Thanks for the great presentation, Hawa, and I hope everyone has a great Wednesday. Thanks, everyone.